All right, let's talk about ads. In the book, the advertising I suggest that you start with is something called retargeting. And what retargeting does is after you've visited a website, it drops a cookie on the visitor's machine. And then when you go to something like Facebook, you start to see sponsored content that reminds you that you've been on this web page. I've tested all sorts of advertising campaigns and the most effective by far are these retargeting campaigns, specifically retargeting campaigns on Facebook. People are visiting Facebook every day and when they see your website's ad in the sidebar, it reminds them that they've been there before and the whole goal is to get them to go back to your website and sign up for a trial, purchase your product, etc. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a retargeting ad campaign on Facebook. There's a few other reasons I recommend you start with Facebook. One is that their ads are fairly affordable right now. Two is they have some of the biggest reach because of all their users. And three, they have really great tools. So when you're getting started, you don't have to spend a lot of time on this. To sign up for a Facebook ads account, you're going to go to facebook.com slash business. You're going to create an ad. And really the only option here you want to choose is increase conversion on your website. You may also, if you're marketing a mobile app, want to choose this one, get installs of your app. I'm going to choose this one here. I'm gonna enter the URL I wanna promote and it's going to ask you to install a conversion pixel. In this case, I've already installed the pixel on this page here. I can show you what that looks like. So on this page here, I have Facebook conversion code installed right here. If you wanna create a new conversion pixel, you can click this plus here. It's gonna ask you what you want to measure. Uh, in this case, I'll measure checkouts and I'm gonna call this Gumroad purchases. Create the pixel. It's not tracking right now because it hasn't been placed anywhere. I'm gonna say I can add it to my website. So you're going to copy this script and install it on your website. In this case, this is checkout conversion tracking. So I'm gonna install this right on Gumroad. I'm going to enter in the script right here. I'm going to choose all products and I'll save that. So in this case, my tracking pixel won't become verified by Facebook until someone clicks on a link in Facebook and buys a product on Gumroad. So I'm gonna continue. I'm going to give this campaign a name, marketing for developers. And the next step is to choose an audience. Now we could just browse Facebook for general audiences. One in this case would be software developer. And Facebook will target people, in this case in Canada, who are interested in software developer between the ages of 18 and 65. But that's not retargeting. That would just be a general ad campaign. That's something you might wanna try later. In the beginning, I would encourage you just target people who have visited your website. So I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna create a new custom audience. There's different types of custom audiences. Customer list, so if you had a launch list on MailChimp or something like that. Website traffic, a list of people who visit your website or view specific pages or app activity, people who have done specific actions in your app. I'm going to click website, and I'm going to view the custom audience pixel. This is something I'm going to need to install on the home page. So I'm gonna go do that right now. All right, so now I've copied and pasted that custom audience code onto my home page. I'm going to save this, deploy it, and I'm going to head back to Facebook and click the create audience button. So now I can choose what kind of website traffic I'd like. In this case, I'm gonna choose anyone who visits my website, but there are other options. You can choose only those who have visited specific web pages, people who have visited some pages but not others, people who haven't visited in a certain amount of time, or custom combination. If your website doesn't have very much traffic, you might wanna increase that to 90 days, and I'm going to call this Dev Marketing Visitors. All right, let's create the audience. Click OK. Now when you first create this audience, you just finished installing the tracking pixel. And so you won't have, Facebook won't have enough data on people who have visited your website yet. So you're gonna have to wait. One thing you can do while you're waiting for that tracking pixel to collect enough data is to use your launch list as a, a starting point for retargeting. In this case, I've loaded up my list from MailChimp, so I'll select that. 
And I'm also going to choose anyone who's visited my other landing page. I'm going to target people in the United States, in the United Kingdom, Australia, Germany, and that's good for now. And you'll see as I select these locations, it, Facebook updates the potential reach of my ad. Right now it's 2,900 people. And when you're in this green area here, that means you've identified enough people that Facebook could start targeting ads to these people. All right, uh, I think my audience is 21 to 55, so I'll select those folks too. And I could save this audience for future use. I'm just going to call this English speaking countries. Now, how much money do you want to spend? There's two different trains of thought here, and it really depends on how much money and how much time you have. On one side, some people prefer to set a really high daily budget, like $200 per day, and really work on seeing what works and iterating quickly. In this case, $200 a day wouldn't really move the needle that much for me. The difference between $200 and $20 is you know, maybe 100 people per day, probably not worth the additional expense. If I had more than 1,800 prospects uh, that Facebook had identified, I might increase the budget. In my case, I'm going to do $5 a day. And this is the other approach, which is to do uh, a very low cost per day, set a start and end date, and just let the ads run with not much maintenance. Uh, so if you don't have as much time, this is a good way to do it. Uh, you're not going to learn as quickly, but you'll at least get some information back. So I'm going to say start an end date. My launch day is on 15th, and I only want to do about a week worth of ads. Uh, so I'm going to spend $180 total to just see, you know, does this generate any sort of sales for me? So I'm going to optimize for clicks, and I'm going to actually let Facebook determine the most clicks for the best price. If you really want to manually set this, you can set your own max price you'll pay for a click, but I'm going to choose this option here. Now I'm going to give this ad set a name. All right. Now I can choose what, how I want my ad to look, and there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can choose a single image or a video, or you can have multiple images in one ad. You might use multiple images if you wanted to have multiple screenshots. I've actually found it more effective to just choose one image and have multiple versions of that image running side by side. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm going to remove that one there, and I'm going to add a few images here. So in this case, I'm just going to test different colored backgrounds for the ads. So I have this picture here. Uh, by the way, you can't have very much text in the image that you upload. Uh, so be aware of that when you're uploading screenshots. Uh, you also can't get around their character limits by putting text in the images because they will automatically detect those. So here I just have a nice feature image. You can see what it will look like down here on the side. If you're going to be using the desktop news feed, you're also going to need to connect your ads to a Facebook page. Um, if you really want to save money, I'd recommend just going with the desktop right column. So this really depends on your budget. Generally speaking, desktop right column are the cheaper ads. Um, I'm choosing not to focus on mobile because I don't have a mobile app, but if you have a mobile app, you might want to turn that one on. Uh, I don't use this audience network. I find it doesn't perform very well. In this case, I'm going to target the right column and I'm going to keep my headline, Marketing for Developers, and then I'm going to say, A Guide to Marketing Your Software Apps and Digital Products. Okay, so my ad is basically done. I can see what it looks like here. I've got my headline, I've got my text, and I'm going to put this live. So I'm going to place order. Right now it's in review. Ads are usually reviewed and approved or not approved within minutes. Uh, the longest I've seen it take is about an hour. So I'm going to click Continue. And now it's saying my ad is pending review. And that's it. That's how you create a retargeting ad in Facebook. Uh, again, you don't have to spend a lot of money. And uh, I think it's a good way to dip your feet into the world of advertising. This also sets you up for doing more general ad campaigns down the road. Uh, so if you see something is performing really well as a retargeting ad, you might want to try it as a general Facebook ad as well. All right, so how do you evaluate the success of your advertising program? 
Well, to do that, you're going to need to know the lifetime value of a customer. Uh, you can use an online calculator like this to determine that. And let's go through a few scenarios. If you have a mobile app, your average lifetime value might be 99 cents. The repeat purchase rate might be two, and customer acquisition cost might be zero right now if you're not doing any advertising. So let's see what it calculates here. So your estimated lifetime value for a mobile app is $1.01. .01. So in order to make an advertising program work for you, you need to get conversions cheaper than a dollar. So for example, if your customer acquisition cost was a dollar, your estimated lifetime value is one cent. If your acquisition cost is 25 cents, your lifetime value is 76 cents. So you can see where this is going. Now, if you have a SaaS or a recurring revenue product, you're, you should use something like bare metrics to get your lifetime value because you're going to need to take churn into consideration when you're calculating lifetime value. So in this case, the lifetime value is $1,606. So every customer you acquire is worth that amount of money. If your total cost to acquire a customer is less than $1,600, let's say it's cost $200, then you're making a considerable profit on each new customer that you acquire. All right, in my example here, I had 92 conversions and I spent $180 total. That's an average of about $1.95 per result. And if I actually hover over this chart, I can see my results were as expensive as $7.50 and as cheap as 39 cents. Now, all of these are really good. $1.95 per conversion, if I'm marketing a SaaS product, that mean, and the lifetime value is $1,600, that means I'm making a lot of money on this advertising campaign and I would wanna double down on that. However, if I'm marketing a mobile application, then this is not a very good result because my app only costs 99 cents and a dollar 95 per result means I'm losing money. Also, if I'm using these ads to just get new mailing list signups, for example, I'll have to consider whether or not it's worth acquiring an email lead for a dollar 95. Again, if I have a SaaS product and my lifetime value is $1,600, it might be worth it to acquire a new email lead for $2 few other interesting things in these results, I can see the number of people reached over time. I can also look at my audience and see which demographics responded the best. In this case, we can see there are way more men that responded to the ads than women. Men between 25 and 34 were my highest cost per result. They also had less conversions than men between 35 and 44. So in the future, maybe I want to just target that group. If I ran multiple ad types, for example, desktop newsfeed versus desktop right column, I can also compare the results there. And again, here we can see the desktop newsfeed is getting way more conversions than the desktop right column. So I think Facebook ads are a great way to, first of all, try to get more leads and more conversions for your product, but also a place to try experiments like which headlines work, which images work, which calls to action work, and to see which demographics are reacting the best to your ad campaigns. It's worth spending a little bit of money here just to get that data alone.